Hi there, my name's Richard McMunn from the interview training website, passmyinterview.com, and in a second, I'm going to walk through this door and undertake a live supervisor interview. So if you have a supervisor interview coming up for any organization whatsoever, make sure you stay tuned because I will help you to pass it. So let's get straight into the interview and I'll teach you what to say in your supervisor interview. Let's go. End up. Hello there, my name's Richard. Hi Richard, welcome. Hello. Thank you very much. Please take a seat. Thank you. Hi Richard, welcome to this interview. My name's Andrew and this is my colleague Joshua. Today we're going to be interviewing you for this supervisor role. So if you're ready, can you start by telling us about yourself? Well, thank you very much for inviting me to be interviewed for this supervisor position today. Prior to applying for the role, I studied the job description in detail to make sure I had the necessary skills, the qualities and the attributes to come into the position and make a fast and immediate impact to your organisation. Over the years, I've worked in various positions where I have built up lots of experience and transferable qualities that I believe will make me an effective supervisor. I am a very good communicator. I always make sure that I communicate to people in a concise manner. I always make sure that I'm good at building relationships with people and I understand the importance of solid relationship building, especially with internal managers and other supervisors, external contractors and stakeholders, and also with my own team members. I am also a very good problem solver, so I have an innovative approach to solving problems. I am a creative problem solver, so when problems occur within a team, I will be that person who will take control and I will come up with a solution to help us to move forward quickly. I'm also very good at working under pressure, and I can motivate a team well to get the most out of them so their strengths help the organisation to move forward and achieve its goals. I have lots of significant achievements in previous roles that I believe will prove to you that I am the right person for this supervisor role. For example, in my last position, I worked as part of a team to help increase sales within the organisation. And we did that by getting together, brainstorming ideas and coming up with different marketing methods to help the organisation increase sales. And we actually increased sales by 25% from the previous year. I am the type of person who will quickly come into this role and you will get a positive return on your investment because I will always focus everything that I do and that my team does on the organisation's commercial and financial objectives. Thank you. Why do you want to be a supervisor? There are several reasons why I want to be a supervisor. First and foremost, I now believe that I have the necessary skills and qualities required to come into the position and do a really good job. There comes a lot of responsibility with the position of supervisor, and I believe I am now ready to take that step up to help the organisation grow and develop. Over the years, I have observed other supervisors and managers to see how they motivate their teams and how they achieve their objectives. And I've always felt that I could be in that position and do the same job that they do to a really high standard. I feel therefore that I have a natural affinity to the role of a supervisor. I also want to be a supervisor because I'm looking to have a position within an organisation where I will have more influence. I will be able to guide a team of people, motivate them, get the most out of them, and help the organisation achieve its commercial objectives. Finally, I want to be a supervisor because I have already had a little taste of what the role is like. In a previous position, my manager knew that I wanted to be a supervisor and she let me look after the team one afternoon because she was away doing other tasks. Now, during that afternoon, we encountered some problems. The supplier let us down right at the last minute. They were supposed to be delivering some products to us which were due to go out to our customers, but they let us down. So I quickly decided to think on my feet, use my initiative, and I sourced an alternative supplier who was able to come quickly, bring in the goods that we needed, and we were then able to get them out to our customers on time. So I already had the ability to work under pressure and work at pace to overcome difficult and challenging problems. So those are the reasons why I want to become a supervisor. Great, thank you.
What are the most important skills and qualities needed to be a supervisor? There are various skills and qualities needed to be a competent supervisor. You need to be a really good communicator. So when you're communicating with your team, you need to give them clear and concise instructions. You need to be a good communicator whilst liaising with the senior management team because you have to listen to the instructions they give you. And you also have to be a good communicator whilst liaising with external stakeholders, contractors and suppliers because you need them working for you to help you achieve your goals. And on that basis, you also need to be a good relationship builder with team members, senior management team and external stakeholders and suppliers. You should also be really good at conflict resolution as a supervisor. That's a really important skill in my opinion. You have to encourage your team members to resolve the conflict themselves, first of all, because after all they are mature and professional adults, but you also need the confidence to step in and resolve that conflict yourself if it isn't getting resolved. You also need to be a good leader and know when to adapt to different styles of leadership. You need to be strategically aware and everything you do as a supervisor should be focused on helping the organisation get where it needs to be. You need to be a really good problem solver. Think quickly on your feet. Have critical thinking skills to be able to overcome challenging problems. You need good time management skills and be able to prioritise tasks accordingly. And finally, you need the awareness that it's really important to build a diverse team as a supervisor because that will help the organisation to succeed and again achieve its commercial and financial objectives. Thank you. Why do you want to work for our company as a supervisor? I want to work for your company as a supervisor for three reasons. The first reason is having studied your organisation in detail before the interview, you obviously operate to very high standards and having high standards myself, I believe that I will be supported in the role to carry out my duties to exacting standards. The second reason why I want to work for your organisation is because I have looked into the services that you provide and the products that you offer your customers. I've carried out a little bit of research around those. Your customers and clients obviously love everything that you do here and that tells me that you are at the cutting edge of what customers and clients want. You are innovative and you are creative. And again, being a creative person myself, I will feel that I can come into the position and I will be given the freedom to explore opportunities to help the organisation grow. Finally, I want to work for your organisation because of the reputation you have, your track record of achievement and also the fact that clearly the senior management team take their responsibilities seriously and again I will be supported in the role. So those are the reasons why I would like to work for your company as a supervisor. Great, thank you. How would you deal with conflict between two team members? Whenever conflict occurred within a team that I was supervising, I would expect the team members to initially try to resolve the conflict themselves. Because after all, they are mature and professional adults, as I mentioned earlier, and they should be able to resolve the conflict themselves and also realise that the objectives of our team and the organisation must come above everything else. So they should resolve it themselves. And whenever I come into a new organisation and take up a position as a supervisor. One of the first things I will do is sit down with the team, I will lay out my standards and expectations and I will say to them, if you encounter conflict, you should be able to resolve it yourselves initially. I will then observe what happens moving forward and if it quickly becomes apparent that that conflict isn't getting resolved, then I would step in and I would resolve it. And to achieve that, I would sit down with each of the team members to find out what has happened. I would never jump to conclusions, I would ask some questions to get to the bottom of the situation and I would then put a plan, in, plan of action in place to get them to resolve it or I would make the decision for them and again my decision on how I want them to act within their roles would be based on helping the organisation achieve its objectives. So I have the confidence to deal with conflict quickly and if the team members aren't resolving it then I will certainly step in because any conflict can have a negative impact on the performance of my team and that would not be acceptable. Okay, great, thank you. What's your management style? My style of management as a supervisor is decisive and transformational. So I am a decisive and confident supervisor who's not afraid to make difficult and unpopular decisions at times that will help the organisation to drive forward and achieve its goals. 
As a supervisor, I think you need to be a confident decision maker. You need to think carefully the impact your decisions will have. And I have the skills and expertise and the experience to make the right decisions for your organisation. I'm also a transformational style of manager because I believe it's really important to encourage your team to be the best version of themselves they can possibly be. And if I am successful in this role and I get to become your supervisor, I will be sitting down with my team members. I will be encouraging them to achieve their full potential. I will find out their strengths and weaknesses, what their career goals and aspirations are, and I will encourage them to embrace change positively. And that all falls underneath that transformational umbrella. So I will always guide my team, motivate them, and help them to be, as I said, the best version of themselves they can possibly be. So as a supervisor, I like to use a combination of decisive management style and transformational. Thank you. Tell me about a time when you've had to deal with a difficult member of your team. When I joined a previous organisation, I was managing a team of people, a small team of people, and it quickly became apparent that a senior member of the team who'd been there for a long period of time was going to be difficult to deal with. During team meetings, whilst we were discussing ideas to achieve a particular project or task, he would be quite dismissive and sometimes I would suggest obstructive. Now, as the new supervisor of the team, I wanted to get everybody on board because I knew to achieve our goals, I needed everybody working for me. So instead of going in heavy handed, I decided to use a style of management to get him on board and to achieve that goal. I sat down with him and I asked him about his experience and what he'd done during his time with the organisation. I got him to talk about the things that he enjoyed doing and about what, how he had contributed to the team. And I then decided to get him involved in a really important project, a project that would make him feel good and make him feel proud to achieve the goal right at the end of the project. So I used his strengths to my advantage and I kept in contact with him throughout the duration of that project. And I built up a really good relationship with him. And I found that by empowering him and using his strengths, I was able to get him again to be a high performing member of the team. So whenever I encounter difficult team members or employees, I believe I have the necessary skills and the management style as a supervisor to get them on board and help us move forward quickly. Thank you. What techniques would you use to motivate a team? There are various techniques that I would use to motivate a team. So first of all, if I was to come into your organisation as the supervisor, I would be sitting down with each team member and carrying out regular performance reviews. I would want to know their strengths and weaknesses because when you know a team member's strengths and weaknesses, you can then give them tasks and projects that they enjoy doing, that they are good at, but you can also give them tasks and projects that help to develop their weak areas. So you can help them to constantly improve and develop and that's good for them, that will make them feel good as a member of the organisation. I would find out what motivates each individual member of my team because when you find out what motivates them, again you can give them tasks and projects that will help them to achieve their individual and personal goals. I would also want to find out what drives them? What are, are their career aspirations? Where do they want to be within a few years' time? Because I can help them if somebody is ambitious and say, for example, they want to be a supervisor, I can help them. I can train them up and give them the right skills and qualities needed to eventually achieve their career goals. So I would give them tasks and projects that are based on their strengths. And I would also, to motivate my team, make sure, and this is really important, that you always praise your team members whenever they do things to a really high standard. I think that's important because if you fail to recognise good work, then that can be demotivating within a team. So I would always praise them. But conversely, if they don't do things right, then I would be honest with them and I would tell them because that's also important when you are motivating your team and helping them to move forward and achieve the organisation's goals. So the next thing to do if you want to pass your supervisor interview is to make sure you click that link right now in the top right hand corner of the video and it will take you through to my website passmyinterview.com and you can download my full set of 23 
supervisor interview questions and top scoring answers, including the ones I gave during that live supervisor interview. Also, don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn. I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below the video, and it is always good to connect with like-minded professionals such as yourself. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I am on a mission to help as many of you as possible to pass your interviews. And of course, I can only do that if you are subscribed to the channel. And finally, please give the video a thumbs up. That tells me that you find the content useful and it motivates me to create more videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best for passing your supervisor interview. Have a brilliant day.